All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Today is the twenty twenty three August the eighth. Uh, this is the Eng uh, English meeting uh, this time. So let's welcome uh, Ross to share about the demo of the Carbon Aware Command Operator. Ross, would you like to share your screen? I yes, yeah, sure. I just share that. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Ross is the first time uh, joining the meeting. Hi, Ross. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself to to us? Yes, definitely. Yes. Um, so, so yeah, to introduce myself, my name is Ross Fairbanks. Um, I de I'm a developer based in Spain, um, and I've been interested in green software for, for, for a while, um, especially around uh, carbon awareness. Um, and I think Kamado has a lot of potential to be used for moving workloads between physical locations to so where the kind of carbon emissions are like a lowest. Um, so to kind of present the idea, I, I've got like a few slides just on green software and carbon awareness and that kind of how the operator works. Uh, and then there's like a short demo, but hopefully most of this will be discussion because I'm hoping to get some ideas on, you know, how the implementation can be improved. Or like what would you think to, you know, to, to the idea as an approach? Um, so let me just start with the, the slides. Yes, yes. So I'm also I'm an advisor on infrastructure at the Green Web Foundation, um, which is part of the Green Software Foundation, um, which in turn like it, it belongs to the Linux Foundation. And I've also intended some of the environmental environmental sustainability tag uh, from the CNCF, um, attending some of the meetings there and trying to be kind of active there, where they're also kind of looking at these topics. Um, and so just to start off on kind of why green software like really high level. Um, so the IEA kind of published some stats on this, saying that data centers and data for transmission um, both account for between one to one and a half percent of global electricity usage. Um, and for context, that's about the same emissions impact as aviation. Um, the other part with um, data centers and tech use in general is as new workloads come on stream like generative AI, the en that energy usage is growing rapidly. Um, so that's why kind of Queen's off software is kind of becoming a high profile on how we can run these systems with lower emissions. Uh, and so this is a slide from the Green Software Foundation. And they split um, kind of actions you can take into three buckets. Uh, this presentation is mainly going to be on carbon awareness, but I wanted to mention the other two just for the kind of completeness. Um, so they talk about energy efficiency. Um, so that could be, for example, lowering the BUE of servers in a data center by having more efficient cooling, kind of improving kind of the, the infrastructure at the data center level. Um, it's also, you could rewrite, you can rewrite software more energy efficient languages like Rust. Um, but, you know, it isn't, obviously it isn't practical to rewrite everything in Rust. And also that probably wouldn't be the best use of time. Um, but that is another thing you can do is, is using kind of more energy efficient languages. Um, and for, for usually kind of let go as well because it's a compiled language and it does quite well there, whereas interpreted languages sometimes kind of use more energy there. Um, the, the, another aspect is hardware efficiency. Um, so obviously increasing server utilization, Kubernetes can help there by running more workloads on, on the same servers. Uh, increasing server lifespan is due to the embodied carbon in the servers, kind of from the manufacturing process, it's kind of the metals, the raw materials in there. And so if those servers can be used for longer, then, the, the, then it, it kind of increases the hardware efficiency there, um, rather than kind of manufacturing new, new devices. Uh, and then it applies more to consumer advice devices, but providing software updates for longer, those devices can keep on being used. And so it kind of helps with the embedded carbon in those devices as well. Uh, and so kind of getting onto carbon awareness. So to, to make systems carbon aware, we need kind of a metric on what we can take scaling actions on. And so the typical one to use is carbon intensity. Um, and this is a measure of how much uh, CO2 is emitted um, per kilowatt hour of electricity consumed. And usually this is measured in, in grams of CO2 or, or equivalent to it's another gas like methane. Um, and, the, and, the, and that's kind of per kilowatt hour. And the general idea is carbon intensity is lower when more renewable energy is available. And um, because there's plenty of solar, plenty of wind, then carbon intensity will be lower. 
and there's APIs um, from kind of what the kind of the two main providers are what time and electricity maps that provide carbon intensity data for like electric electricity grids across multiple countries. Um, and so for the example, the demo is going to be using electricity maps. And this is kind of the map of the coverage that they have. And they're kind of working to increase that coverage. Um, what's quite good is the kind of the parses they use are open source. So people kind of kind of work on that and can add more kind of data sources um, as they come available. And usually this is kind of from the emissions from the, from the grid that's been used. Um, but so this is when we see the demo, it's kind of it's based off, the, off this electricity maps data. Um, and so with carbon awareness, there's basically two axes that you can scale on. Uh, one is by time and the other is by space. Um, so with temporal shifting is the idea is that you have, if you have a work that's not urgent, that can be delayed by, by a few hours, you can maybe run out of the time and carbon intensity is lower. Um, and so this graph is from a, from a blog post that, 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 that I wrote, um, which is looking at the carbon density in Northern California. Um, and the situation there is because they've got quite a lot of solar in the grid. Um, during kind of daylight hours, the carbon density can be quite low, so it's a good time to run things. Uh, but then in the afternoon, as people kind of go home, like leave from work, and kind of as activity increases, then the carbon density also increases. And so um, Keda have been doing, and, and Microsoft have been looking in this area. So Microsoft announced an operator called the Carbon Aware Keda Operator, um, which extends Keda by kind of adding carbon intensity to the scaling that it uses there. So if there's a workflow that can be moved um, to, you know, that's not time sensitive, then Keda can be used there. Um, and it's using the Carbon Aware SDK, which is a software foundation tool, and it's using what time, you know, for the data. Um, but it's a similar idea. And when I sort of saw this come out, I, I thought that people, nobody was really looking at spatial shifting. Uh, and that's where I think, you know, Kamada can really fit in. Um, so spatial shifting is, mo is moving actual work close to physical locations where there's a lower carbon intensity. Um, and so what I've created is a kind of a prototype operator to demonstrate the approach and to get feedback on it. Um, and it's using um, like, like a very simple scheduling algorithm. In a minute, I'll show the CID, um, but what it does is it ranks all, all the clusters by the carbon intensity for their location. And then it just selects how many are desired of those clusters. Uh, and the, the way I kind of chose to integrate is it sets the cluster affinity um, and it supports the cluster propagation policy and the propagation policy CIDs by setting those cluster affinities to the clusters with the lowest carbon intensity. Um, and in this case, it's using a different library. It's using a library called Grid Intensity Go, uh, which is one of the things we've been working on at the Greenwood Foundation. And like I mentioned before, it's using electricity maps as, as the source of the, of, of the carbon density data. Um, and so yeah, this is the actual CID. Um, so it's, pr it's pretty simple. The main thing is this, this spec of cluster locations. And then here, you would have the name of the member cluster and also the code, which is um, the code, in this case, the ones that electricity, electricity maps are using. Uh, so in the case of these, obviously it's country codes. Um, for some larger countries, you can also have different grid regions. So this is the kind of California grid region that we saw before, um, you know, for this cluster. So it's usually either country code or, or the grid code to get the data there. Um, and then it says how many clusters are desired. So in this case, it's two out of three. Uh, and then it targets um, the propagation or the propagation policy or the cluster propagation policy that we want to update. Um, and so, yeah, does anyone have any questions up to this point? Or if not, I can go into the demo. Um, yeah, that's okay. I'll just continue with the demo then. I just need to switch windows here. Um, yeah, let me just find my terminal. Yes, yes. So this is, um, I'm using the, the setup that you have kind of in the, you know, in the quick start. Um, so what's running here is um, the, the, there's the control plane cluster and then three member clusters that are all kind clusters. Uh, and so this is the, the, the carbon work, the carbon work commodity policy uh, that we saw before. Um, and the main difference here um, is in, in the status, I also kind of, I've got some information so in this case, it's chosen the clusters in the Netherlands and in Germany. Um, so this active clusters is which clusters have been selected. And then it has the, the carbon intensity metrics. 
Um, so Netherlands is kind of lowest, followed by Germany. Um, and at the moment in, 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 the, in the US, they've kind of got a higher carbon density there. So it'll just select how, that, that based on, on the desired number of clusters. And then, so if I get the actual, um, if I get the propagation policy, uh, what it's actually done is, is it set the cluster affinity to those two clusters. Um, and so what I can just as a test show kind of working is I'm gonna change this um, to France. Um, so they have a lot of nuclear, so usually they have kind of quite low, um, low, low data. Um, so we'll see the should of, um, Yes, so it's picked up. So the, 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 the French carbon density is quite, is quite a bit lower. So it's selected those two clusters. Um, and then it's updated the propagation policy. So that seems to me the best kind of route of kind of deciding which clusters to target. Um, and then yeah, the, the operator itself is just built with, just with KubeBuilder. So I just have Kube, the, the, the operator running in, in another cluster, uh, sorry, in another window. Um, but yeah, let me just switch back to the final slides and then we can get on to questions. Yes, so it's definitely kind of, you know, at the moment it's really a prototype stage. Um, so one of the things I was thinking of was to support more CRDs. Um, I think maybe there's some around the HPA and the, the kind of service CRDs as well that we need to be supported as well. Um, also, currently, I think also the Helm chat would be useful just to make it easier to deploy. And um, so far, I've just been running it in the kind of you know, kind of Docker setup with Kind, and that's worked really well for development. But it'd be good to have a Helm chat as well. And also in kind of improving the algorithm, it would also be good to have a look at the forecast. So when looking at, at, the, at, at, the, at the grid region, if we know that the, the competency is low now, but it's going to increase in like an hour or something, it might not be the best cluster to choose. And the other part is all be to see if there's a way of incorporating distance between the, into the clusters, because you might not want to move, move a, a workload too far to say another continent and just for performance factors as well. Um, yeah, and just here, I just tried to include some links. So that's the code to the operator. There's also a blog post I wrote that kind of explains a bit more about it. Um, this is the Go library that we're using to access electrician maps, and it also supports what time as well. Um, this is some of the kind of green software kind of training kind of principles on, I, 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 on those kind of three aspects of energy efficiency, hydro efficiency, and carbon awareness. And then another thing as well is the environment sustainability tag. They have a landscape document which has some projects like Kepler, uh, which is which is their, and a Prometheus exporter for energy metrics. And if this is an idea that kind of makes sense, then we could include um, Kamada, you know, in, in the landscape doc as well. Um, and they've also mentioned in one of their meetings, if someone from the team here wanted to present on Kamada and this use case, um, they'd be really really open to that as well. Um, but yeah, this was this was um. You know, the, the demo I had so far. So, if you have any questions or any, any feedback on how the design can be improved, that'd be really appreciated. Okay, thanks, Ross. Uh, that, that's really impressive. Um, can you please go back to your slides? I have a, a question. Yes, yeah, sure. Go back to your slides. I remember page eight. Page eight. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, with with the the CRD. Yes, the page eight. Yes, uh, I I I guess the operator uh, will reconcile the carbon aware command policy CR and uh, uh, create uh, the command propagation policy. And am I right? Yes, so the, the way that I created it, that there's a, there's like a quick start in the Ruby, or the way I created it was I created the, the propagation policy without the cluster affinities. So it's present in the cluster, and then the operator is just setting the cluster affinities. Um, it could, I guess, generate generate the whole, the whole propagation policy, but so far it just sets the cluster affinities. Great, guys, nice. thanks. Um, 
and, and the, the idea was with those cluster locations, then any clusters that are, that are present that commander is aware of, they can be put, going to put in that list. And then you just need to know the, the, the kind of the region codes for the, for the carbon intensity. And that just varies depending on which API you're using. Um, I, I have a question. So I'm uh, just trying to understand uh, what you have done. Uh, in, in the example Sorry. you uh, mentioned, uh, like the, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you, but you uh, uh, is it able. clearance? Okay. Uh, let me repeat my question. So uh, you have demo like, uh, Sorry, Kevin, <laughs> your voice so, is uh, uh, if is the breaking. desired cluster. So, okay, maybe it's the... yes. Sorry, I, I couldn't put that up either. I was just breaking up there. Sorry, Kevin, Kevin, your voice is breaking. Not working, sure. You, you can please please go ahead first. Okay, Kevin is trying another device. Uh, so, uh, anybody have a uh, questions? Hi, Ross. I, I have a question. Uh, uh, the operator is, uh, is uh, developed by yourself or your, uh, your company or organization, something? Um, yes, it, it's, it's developed by myself. Um, mm. That's also, I, I'd definitely be interested in collaborating if there's other people you know, that would want to work on the idea as well. Um, mm. Potentially, we could also work with it within Green Web Foundation. We have some projects there that Grid Intensity Go is kind of a Go library, but it also has a Prometheus exporter. So potentially, we could work on it with Green Web Foundation as well. Um, but my idea was just really to get the idea out as a prototype, and I would definitely be open to collaborating and improving it you know, for the people who wanted to work on it as well. And we could move it somewhere else you know, you know, if that makes more sense. Okay. Because yeah, that would just be a question, you know, from my side about whether we could talk to the environmental environmental sustainability tag, um, you know, you know about Commander as well, because they were kind of interested in the idea as well to get their feedback as well, and there might be some people there that want to collaborate on this as well. Hello, Kevin. Hello, am I back? Yes, you're back. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm trying to understand uh, uh, what you have done. Uh, so uh, currently like the uh, carbon aware commander policy, it's like uh, you, you have basically some extra steps, right? To automatically set the cluster affinity on uh, the propagation policies. So uh, I, I, I want to understand uh, uh, also in your uh, example, uh, you have uh, uh, configured that the desired clusters uh, is two or even more. Uh, will you uh, change the weight of different clusters according to the uh, carbon or uh, what are the uh, what is the expected behavior uh, your uh, CRD going to provide? Yes, yes. So, so currently the scheduling algorithm is, is, is very simple. So it just ranks yeah. each cluster by carbon intensity and it will, will include, and it will select the, the, the lowest values. 
Um, so at the moment, there isn't a concept of having a weight, um, but that could definitely be added. I think that would be very useful if you want something to be primarily in one cluster, unless the carbon density is very high and you want it to go somewhere else. Um, so this was really just to get kind of a prototype to get a first version out. But I think I, I, mm -hmm. having kind of weight and having more a more sophisticated algorithm would definitely be, in, you know, be beneficial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, I think uh, uh, you, you uh, first of all, I think the uh, carbon awareness is very uh, interesting topic, and uh, we we're definitely uh, thinking about uh, to introduce some of uh, uh, something uh, similar uh, mechanism to provide uh, provide the users. Uh, to set up their uh, preference, uh, taking the uh, carbon uh, into the uh, consideration. Yeah, I, I think uh, maybe for a longer term, uh, we can, uh, you know, improve the uh, improve the uh, algorithms to like uh, dynamically adjust the weight uh, because the uh, we we also have other. Uh, dimension uh, algorithms, so maybe we uh, the users uh, is able to uh, balance the weight between uh, multiple dimensions. Uh, just there's some quick thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. I think that that would be great, especially you know if if it's you know that support was built into Camera itself, or or kind of an operator that was kind of was was be kind of next to it. Um, but, but, but I think yeah, also, it, 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 obviously you're more familiar with the CRDs that you have. This was sort of my first kind of take on kind of looking at it. But I think improving the CRDs and, and including weights, including other features um, would, would be great. Um, and if that's something we could collaborate on, that, 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 that you know, that'd be really great. Um, because I think in Kamada, because you can move workloads between clusters you know, and there's a lot of power to do that. I think adding carbon awareness as a layer above that um, it is a really kind of promising approach to, to do this. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so and another question is, um, so uh, I, I also would like to know uh, if you have any uh, uh, plan or preference to uh, how to can, uh, how, how we can move forward on this uh, part of thing. Uh, I think this is, this is really a, a, a very interesting uh, part of the work. Yeah. Yes, I mean, would, would it make sense to me to open an issue in this and kind of show the sort of the prototype that's here, but then how we can improve that and make it more, you, you know, more, more powerful and kind of improve it? I don't know what would be the yeah. best route to do that. Would a, would a, you know, an issue for this, you know, make sense? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. I, I think open an issue would be great. And the, uh, we uh, you can uh, basically introduce the idea also uh, uh, you know, uh, include the links of your current work, mm -hmm. including the blog post, your, uh, your uh, current code, and also maybe the slides. And uh, we can see if we can uh, also invite more people to join and we can uh, continue to discuss and move forward. Yes, yeah, so that that would be great. Yeah, I can definitely open open the issue. Um, and you know, include include the slides here, and, and and those links, and and that would be great. You know, if we, if we can get a group of people that could look at this. Um, I think this was similar to what happened with with, with Microsoft, and and the CAD operator. Kind of a group of people kind of worked on that, um, to get something out there. So I, I can definitely create the issue, and it would be great. You know, to collaborate on this and push it forward. Sure, sure, that would be very helpful. Yeah, um, uh, th are there any other questions? Yeah, I see one question from the chat window. It's from Afen. Afen, would you like to describe your question? Or I can just read it. Yeah. Uh, 
Ross, I have a question. Do we have some quantifiable forecast or metrics regarding the impact of using the carbon emission aware operator? Um, there has there has been some research. There's some papers I can include on the issue where they looked at carbon awareness um, and you know the savings they can find. I know that there's a paper called Let's Wait a While, which looked at the time-based scaling, and and they found if you could delay things by I think it was up to up to 48 hours, you could you could get like a 21% savings. So there is some academic research like on this area, and I can definitely you know include those papers in, in the issue. Um, it, it's also got me thinking as well on kind of forecast for carbon intensity as well, um, because th th those exist from what time the electricity maps, but those are kind of in their paid API. Um, so, so what was quite good with this was for the for the prototype, we can use their kind of free tier, which has the current the current values, um, but they also have forecasts for carbon intensity itself, which can be useful sometimes for scheduling. But we could have that as kind of an, an extra mode. Um, to, to see, you know, to, to, to build forecasting into, into the scheduling algorithm. Um, but, but I think it's a great point about the academic research, you know, that's going on to kind of validate the approach. And it's good that, you know, that that approach is out there. So I can definitely include some links in the issues um, to, to, to those papers that I've seen. Okay, um, any other uh, questions? Oh, I, I can stop sharing as well if it's done. But so I, I, as a next step, I, I can create that, that issue and then we sort of see where we go from there. But if there's interest in kind of having another call on this as well, it would definitely be open to that. Um, but but uh, uh, they're really, yeah, appreciate if I, if I can create an issue and then we can take a look at it and see how we can kind of push this forward, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I just want to uh, um, say thank you again. Uh, this topic is uh, very interesting and uh, we are actually already uh, having some uh, thoughts on this, uh, but you, your progress definitely helped a lot. So uh, let's create the continue and uh, get more people involved. And uh, yeah. Hello, uh, I see Josh raise his hands. So yeah. Uh, hello, maintainers. Uh, basically, I have a doubt regarding the LFX mentorship and would like to get your views on that. So can I discuss about that? So, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So basically, uh, I came across uh, Kermada. Uh, through LFX and I have some of my doubt regarding my mentorship application. So mm. I would like to discuss with you. So while preparing the cover letter, I would like to know that should we need to add uh, any timeline related uh, topic uh, regarding the issue on how we should approach in a cover letter or do we yeah. need to keep it on point based on our aims and a proposal? Uh, okay, Yash, ha have you submitted your application to the uh, LFX? Yes, I have submitted the, my application, uh, but just need to close verify with you with the maintainers that uh, does the application or cover letter basically requires any timeline related uh, section to which propose our uh, broader perspective regarding how we should tackle the given issue. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I think uh, including some uh, time plan uh, uh, description would be very helpful, but it's not required. So 
uh, it, it actually depends on you, I think. Sure, sure. Just uh, had a quite uh, overview and go through with the uh, care mada in my local system. And I can say I'm recently working on that issue and will be uh, happy to uh, start contributing to the project. So that's what my I had a smaller issue to talk. And yeah, thank you for that. Getting a clear view for my issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, then the meeting time is uh, uh, given now. All right. Um, we are, uh, we're, we're running out of the meeting time today. So um, thank you again for joining meeting. And uh, thank you, Rose, again for your great presentation. Let's uh, move forward. Okay. Um, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you all uh, again for joining us. See you next time. Thank you all. Thank you, Ross. Thanks, buddy. Bye. Bye. Bye.